<laughs> What's Zoom's long-term future? With all due respect to that company, you got more competition with Teams and WebEx and others. But everybody I know is Zoomed out. They never do another yeah. Zoom again. I'm not, okay. It may be too check. soon. What, what's, the, what's the outlook? Yeah, I, th I think, you know, a year ago, we kind of talked about the fear of being at, at peak Zoom and f Zoom fatigue setting in. And here we are a year later. And the growth story is completely dead. Uh, it was we, we saw the lowest upside surprises in revenues, EPS, and EBITDA. Uh, since they become a public company. Uh, we saw the lowest uh, net customer ads in, in over three years as well. And, and you mentioned Microsoft Teams. They are the 800-pound gorilla, which is coming after them uh, with aggression. You know, Microsoft told us in July, their monthly active users are up to 250 million. And we also know that they're already planning to work with, with Facebook or the Meta or whatever, whatever they're called now to kind of see what maybe, you know, what the work, remote workplaces can look like in a, in a virtual world as well. So. Microsoft is investing heavily, and they've said before they plan on going after uh, Zoom with all they have and, and eating their lunch. So Zoom, I would not be. I'm, I'm in the camp that rallies are to be sold versus buying the dips. I just think the, the story has uh, has done a complete 180, and, and there's no growth, and hence the evaluation is probably still too uh, you know still too steep, even with the stock down another eight percent today. Yeah, you know, and I guess the hope there, Joel, would be that there is going to be this this model, this hybrid model, at least in many markets for a while. If you go down south, a lot of people are back in the office. But in the northeast, a lot of people are pushing back. Will there be a market for Zoom longer term? It's not going to be what it was, obviously, but we're not going to delete the app off of our phones or our computers, are we? I mean, there's still going to be uh, a, a sort of a hybrid situation where video communications have a role. Exactly. And, and, and 100 percent. But I think uh, the difference is, as you said, and I think a bigger I mean, in, in fairness to Zoom, I think their churn this past quarter was a lot better than many expected. But I think with smaller customers becoming a lot bigger piece of the total revenue pie, that is going to lead to a very volatile metric in, in, in turn. You're going to see churn go up and down. How, how are analysts and, and investors kind of going to try to value this? And I'm going to say the stock's just going to it's going to lead to a lower, lower multiple. And eventually, once kind of we even moderate the growth story fades kind of further, you're going to see the stock start trading off the of EPS, and then the debate will more shift to margins. And as kind of we t we discussed before, that's where Microsoft comes into play. And 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 I think you really could see mm. severe margin erosion in the years ahead for a story like Zoom and and sort of like Peloton, they've almost just become a victim of their own success. The growth was almost too explosive, too fast. And now they're just they're, they're, they're struggling yeah. to live up to the Wall Street hype, which is uh, almost impossible to do. Well, we're showing Microsoft on the screen. And, Joel, you, you have something really fascinating in, in one of your notes recently, which, you know, you think about a marathon, you know, sort of the, the last part. You got maybe three runners just cooking it. And then one of them kind of drops off and then two just go on. You think that those two top runners are Microsoft and Google because they still have huge growth and they still have good margins and you think Apple just, you know, as, as amazing of a company it is, might be getting a little bit left behind here, at least in relation to Microsoft or Google. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, I think you, Al Alphabet's one of those kind of rare, not rare stories. But, you know, I think if you pull back, you know, you look back five, 10 years, it has been an underperformer within the large cap growth complex. Microsoft's transformation has just been, you know, kind of, you know, out, out of this world. Uh, you know, what Nadella has done over there. But as you said, I think you, you check the boxes, Microsoft and Alphabet, they got, they got elevated margins, enormous scale, and just impressive growth, which is showing no signs of slowing. And they continue to innovate and, and benefit from secular trends. And, and that's what those, where those stories kind of come together. And they really separate themselves from some of the other larger cap growth names. I think NVIDIA, you know, what they told us last week, can kind of, uh, you know, can probably potentially be added to that bucket. My only concern with NVIDIA is some of the recent activity really reeks of kind of a retail uh, footprint and, and punt options that we've been seeing in that name. Um, but I think in, in terms of the sec names that are growing from, you know, secular growth, scale margins, Microsoft and Alphabet are just kind of unparalleled in that universe. And what's wrong with the payments companies? I mean, everybody talks about the future of finance and fin people yep. throw around the term fintech, financial technology, like they're throwing around, you know, talking about the weather. But yet yep. investors don't seem that interested largely. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's also a function of this market. And uh, we haven't seen stocks that haven't, say, you know, haven't performed or they're disappointed. 
and they haven't made investors of money for a long, long time now. There's just no appetite to, to jump back in. So whether it's a PayPal and a sort of desperation deal going after pins, and then you look down further, further down the scale, FIS, GPN, Pfizer, you know, earnings season for these stocks was very underwhelming. And you can you can blame it due to a choppy recovery, um, just a, a corporate you know travel you know pause or a very slow return to that as well, and and then they also throw in the BNPL, or sorry the buy now pay later kind of explosion as well, um, which is kind of disrupting the multiples and and, and creating you know disrupting disruption on that side. You just lead to a group of stocks they're not value, they're not growth, and they're sort of in no man's land, and investors are completely shunning them. So I would I wouldn't I have no interest as well is chasing stocks that have underperformed to this degree. And unfortunately for us here at Webbush, video games also kind of fall into that camp where they're kind of just in no man's land in, in terms of having any sort of factor identity.